Hello, my name is Nalili Swaniso and you're watching Buckingham News, our top stories. New roadworks are beginning to take place throughout Buckingham, causing delays. The Buckingham Trader of the Year Awards returns to town to find out the favourite local businesses. And MK Lightning look to continue their winning streak against Edinburgh. Roadworks. Needed but nevertheless always a pain. Buckingham Town will be reminded of this in upcoming weeks. Alice Hills reports. After a long period of complaints from locals, Buckingham's roads are finally being updated starting from next week. As positive as these changes are, locals might be faced with traffic and frustration during the day and nighttime work. We asked them what they thought about this. I think it would be less disruption during the night because there's not that many people using the road, but during the day, yes, it is quite disruptive. The high street is probably the busiest place and like sometimes when they decide to do roads leading to the high street, it kind of changes the whole traffic of the whole place. Transport for Buckinghamshire, ran by the County Council, will be updating Mitre Street, Goldcott Road and Grenville Road and more. It is, it is what the motorists or car owners require, um, the roads are kept up to date. There is no other good time for them to be up, uh, upgraded or to be maintained. With locals understanding, we will see if the Council pulls through in improving the roadworks without causing too much trouble. This is Alice Hills, Buckingham News. To celebrate National Architecture Week, we had a look at the variety of buildings and different styles of architecture found in Buckingham. Lexi Grisner reports. Buckingham has many historic buildings and lots of interesting architecture. There is the Old Jail Museum, which was built in the 18th century and was initially built to house prisoners. There is also the Old Town Hall, which is topped with a gold swan and was rebuilt in the 18th century following a fire in Buckingham in 1724. The jail does look historic. Beautiful is not the word I'd use. I think it's wonderful. I think it's um, it's very uh, it's pleasing to the eye. No, I prefer the older for for Buckingham. Um, we've got wonderful historic buildings which have been there for years. Many locals are very fond of the parish church, which was completed in 1781. The rebuilt Barton's Hospital was owned by the Barton family and even today a row of almshouses are known as Barton's Hospital. Alongside this, the Bartons also paid for the rebuilding of the church after the steeple collapse. There's a lot of history to buildings in Buckingham that people don't know, but locals seem to prefer the older buildings to the newer ones. This is Lexi Grisner reporting for Buckingham News. University of Westminster Professor Peter Irwin came to the university to talk about second chances with further education and how students can secure social mobility. Washma Chuktai was there. Peter Irwin is here at the University of Buckingham to discuss the role of English education in social mobility. Peter Irwin is the director of the Centre for Employment Research and Professor of Applied Economics at the University of Westminster. He has published in journals such as Work, Employment and Society, Applied Economics and International Journal of Management Reviews. He also has a particular focus on the issues faced by the government policy makers. Within the UK, he has worked with HM Revenue and Customs, the Department of Business Innovation and Skills, the Ministry of Defence, the Department of Work and Pensions and the Ministry of Justice. So it's mainly focused on the role that further education plays in um, helping kids from disadvantaged backgrounds who do badly um, at secondary school, what we call Key Stage 4, and helping them to recover some qualifications which allows them to enter the labour market. The talk was successful and knowledgeable as many people turned up. This is Prishma Chuktai, Buckingham News. The Buckingham Trader of the Year competition is back for its second year. The competition sees local businesses compete for votes from residents. Samantha Carmichael has the story. The Buckingham Society, a group of local volunteers who work to improve the town, launched the Buckingham Trader of the Year Award during the last year, with well over 500 nominations produced for more than 50 local traders. Nominations are now open for this year's awards and residents will vote to reveal the most popular trader of the year, a runner-up, cafe of the year and market trader of the year. What we can bring, I think, is the atmosphere, how you feel here, you can be cosy, you can relax 
I know sometimes it's too busy to relax here, but it's a nice place where to go, it's big enough, so you've got plenty of space. Nomination forms are available from the traders themselves or at the old jail until Friday the 15th of November. The winners will receive a shield and certificates and will uphold their title for one year before the next competition. Yeah, we won the award last year. It was really nice to, to um, even have been nominated, really. But uh, because it's all done by the customers, I think a lot of them... We, we put a poster up and obviously asked people to help when, when we found out. Um, but it was just really quite nice to have that come out of the blue that we've been even, that we've been nominated and to win it was just a bit extra special. Uh, I like, uh, I don't know the name of it, but the one in the arcade uh, that sells pottery. In um, it would be uh, Meadow Walk Tea Rooms in town. Um, it's a local business. The Mayor will announce the results on Sunday the 26th of November, just before the Christmas lights are switched on. So show your support for your favourite local trader. This is Samantha Carmichael for Buckingham News. In other news, a group of scammers known as the Nottingham Knockers have been reported in Buckingham over the last week. The group go knocking door to door, selling low quality goods at inflated prices, even claiming to be ex-convicts. These scammers have been spotted in Linden Village, Page Hill, Brackley, as well as other locations. The police have advised locals not to answer their doors. And now, over to sports with Henry Kilter. Thank you, Nolly. Thursday the 26th of October saw the MK Lightning take on the Edinburgh Capitals for an elite league matchup at Planet Ice MK. Philip Johnson has more. Thursday evening's game was an adrenaline field event right from the offset. But much to the disappointment of the MK Lightning, it was the Capitals drawing first blood. The Lightning was quick to remedy this however, with an equaliser coming from captain Kevin King. A scrappy and hard-fought goal from Paul Phillips in the second period allowed the Lightning to begin to develop a lead. An unassisted goal from Christian Isaacson later in the period brought the score to 3-1. Only moments later, the Edinburgh Capitals answered with a highly technical goal. However, it was to be their last in the game. In an attempt to seal the fate of the game, a further two goals came from Lightning players Francis Ferro-Paul and Kyle Essary respectively to bring the score to MK Lightning 5 and the Capitals 2. With only minutes left in the game, Lightning rubbed some metaphorical salt in the wound with a further two goals. The final goal, scored with only 1 minute and 49 seconds remaining on the clock, was clearly the last nail in the coffin for Capitals netminder Pavel Shigalo who was visibly distressed at the loss. Score at full time was MK Lightning 7, Edinburgh Capitals 2. This is Philip Johnson for Buckingham News. Last Sunday afternoon, Buckingham Athletic women's team took on Hoyport at home. Karim Nabil was there to see how they got on. Buckingham Athletic's women division were unmotivated in the first half with a lot of unfulfilled passes and often falling victims to the offside trap. The cold weather played a significant factor in keeping morale low with a lot of players complaining about the poor conditions. A lack of strategy meant neither team dominated the first half, with a large proportion of the play was being restricted to the no man's land. Hollyport parked the bus effectively, preventing attacks and advances from Buckingham but often failing to seize the opportunity to secure a goal themselves. Evidently uninspired, Buckingham clawed their way back to victory, savaging what was left of the match and planting three goals firmly into the net. A match marked by selfishness and missed opportunities, Buckingham nevertheless still achieved a 3-2 victory in a game that left no lasting impression on supporters. This is Kareem Nabil reporting for Buckingham News. Yesterday evening saw Buckingham Athletic take on Watson Park at home for the Division 1 Cup. Josh Auckland was on the sidelines. Buckingham Athletic's game last night proved to be a challenge for the home side as both teams struggled to find the back of the net. The first half contained goals with Buckingham scoring the first goal early in the game by forward Josh Hooper. Watson Park quickly replied with a second goal, scored from a long ball that resulted with a tap in from Watson Park's star man. The game ended up in a draw leading to penalties. Penalties were also close, with both sides successfully getting their chances. Buckingham's goalkeeper made an early save, which put them on the front foot during the shootout. 
and made another at the end, securing Buckingham's victory. Uh, obviously, we got the result we wanted. Um, I guess we could have sort of improved our, our game management and uh, our ball retention, which, um, which was lacking in the first half, but as we grew into the game, we got better. The boys, to be fair, played better uh, as a team, as a unit, they up their work rate, and Chris went up top, we changed the formation slightly and um, scored a really good goal. So. Despite it not being their best performance this season, Buckingham Athletics managed to edge their way into the next round of the Division 1 Cup. This is Josh Auckland for Buckingham News. And now, back to the studio. Last week Friday, the Creative Arts Society helped students to become truly terrifying for the Halloween events. Alice Massimiani has more. The Creative Arts Society always creates incredible events for people to participate. This time, it was in honour of Halloween and preparation of the Halloween party that was taking place to the University of Buckingham. Last Friday, in fact, the Creative Arts Society organised a Halloween makeup event to let people create their own makeup for the Halloween party. Members and non-members of the university could participate in creating their own makeup a workshop. People could improve their own costumes with an amazing realistic makeover. With such realistic makeovers, this Halloween will certainly not be missing out on the fried factors. This is Alicia Massimiani from Buckingham News. Every once in a while, it's okay to turn off our health-conscious minds. National Greasy Food Week is a fantastic excuse to indulge in all our favorite guilty foods. This week, we take on a national treasure that suits any diet, the English breakfast. Ben Collins reports. What better way to start your day than with a hot, hearty, full English breakfast? We went behind the scenes with Chef Mark to see how this national treasure is made. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of the dishes that is all around the world. They have it in Spain, they have it in, it's been, it, the British culture has been all around the world. And our eating habits, I suppose, um, have, have transversed to other countries. This is indeed one of life's many pleasures, and some things are too good to mess around with. This is Benedict Collins for Buckingham News. Thank you for watching Buckingham News. We will see you next week.